Today on The Nation Speaks, today's youth are shockingly unhappy and spending their time in some troubling ways, including deep in their cell phones. That's what Jeremy Adams says after 24 years in the classroom and in his new book, Hollowed Out, a warning about America's next generation. Then in America Q&A, we ask if you think you spend too much time on your cell phone. And if you do, do you know if you're hooked? Hillary Cash runs an internet addiction program. She tells us the signs, impacts, and some strategies to kick the habit. Finally, in our second America Q&A, we ask, do you trust self-driving cars? Hello and welcome to The Nation Speaks. I'm your host, Cindy Drewcare. Every generation says it when they hit a certain age. Kids today, they're wasting their lives. They'll never amount to anything. But what if the trends we're seeing today really are profoundly different, and there is something to worry about? Never has there been a generation so deeply immersed in technology, and believe it or not, it's only been 14 years that we've had computers in our pockets available 24-7. We sat down earlier with our first guest, who comes to us direct from the trenches of the American classroom, and he has some disturbing war stories to share. Joining us now is Jeremy Adams, the author of a new book called Hollowed Out, A Warning About America's Next Generation. You've been a civics teacher for 24 years, is that right? At the high school and college level in Bakersfield, California. And as your title suggests, you wrote this book as a warning, uh, an alarm bell. Of course, your whole book is talking about this, but maybe you could start by just sketching out for us what you're seeing that concerns you most. One of the really interesting things about being a public school teacher is, you know, you really get to know the students. Uh, you dig in, you realize kind of where they come from, what their values are, how they spend their time. Uh, and if you've taught as long as I have, as you mentioned, uh, this is my 24th year uh, as a classroom teacher, you know, you start to notice if there are alarming pivots in the culture. Uh, you start to notice if there are troubling trends in the way that they spend their time. Uh, and, you know, I'm not special. Uh, you know, you, I, I've noticed that a lot of the most disturbing things about our young people are not just in my room, they're in the classroom next to me, and they're in the schools in my city, and they're in schools all over the country. And so when you start talking to other teachers, you start to realize that a lot of our young people uh, are embracing a, a kind of a value system, a w the way they spend their time, the way they look at their country, the way they look at their own lives, uh, in a way that is not going to lead them to live particularly meaningful and purposeful lives. Um, and I'm also a civics teacher. Uh, I worry about the American experiment. America is not like other countries. We can't have a single lost generation that doesn't understand what it means to be an American uh, and what those values are and how you perpetuate the American experiment. So I, I really am worried about a lot of the habits and the values or the, you know, the lack thereof in, in our young people in the last five to 10 years. So can you give us some of those things that alarm you most? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think the one thing that I would want normal, everyday, good Americans to know, what would shock them is the extent to which young Americans today live their lives completely untethered to adult values, adult expectations, and most of all, adult role models. Young people today live their lives in a way that, that would be unrecognizable to people who are my age. They don't go to the movies. They don't go to football games. They don't date. They don't read books. Uh, half of all 18 to 34-year-olds don't have a romantic partner. The, the desire for marriage and family is in free fall. Uh, it's not just that our young people are not religious. I'm a public school teacher. It's none of my business if they're religious or not. But what bothers me is that they don't know anything uh, about religion. They're the least patriotic generation in American history. Uh, and, and many of them uh, look at life in a way that I, I think is a radically individualistic. Um, you know, when you think about all of the things that fill in a young life, uh, that make it special, that make it, uh, you know, kind of enchanting, uh, a sense of grandeur. And you think of friendships, you think of love, you think of learning, uh, you think of going out and seeing and doing things. And our young people today are lonely, they're isolated. You know, the one thing that I, I really want people to understand is just how unhappy this generation is. It is shocking. Uh, one out of four 18 to, 30, uh, 18 to 24 year olds have considered suicide in this country. Can you just say what the impact of the pandemic, the lockdown, the Zoom classes has had on you know what you were already seeing? 
Yeah, that's a great question. You know, the things that I was worried about, uh, the isolation, the young people who don't know how to hold a conversation, they don't make eye contact, they don't go out and socialize, uh, they're not having meals with their parents, uh, nine to 10 hours a day on their phones. These were things that I was worried about prior to March of 2020. And what has happened in the last 18 months is that these problems of isolation, of loneliness, of looking at, at, at screens and phones all day long, these problems have been amplified and accelerated. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be really hard to get back a sense of normalcy. Um, you know, I, I wrote a, an op-ed for the LA Times about a month ago, uh, and, I, and, I, and I said that what we're seeing with young is the rise of what I call Zoombies, kids who have been on Zoom calls for 18 months and and now that they're back in a regular classroom many of them are zombies they they don't know how to you know re-engage in the classroom they don't know how to have a conversation we find that a lot of the activities band choir sports drama we're having trouble getting kids back into the kind of connective tissue of an american classroom and an american campus we're really in a really deep hole there's no question about it Okay, so what are some of the consequences of this, do you think, as they grow up a bit older? Well, I, I think that the, the, the biggest consequence uh, is that, you know, as a generation, we have given young people freedom, but we haven't, as adults, stepped forward and given them the values, the wisdom, the knowledge, the insight on how to use that freedom well. If we give young people the freedom to do whatever they want to do, we have to teach them that the beauty, the magnificence, the fecundity of freedom is that it allows young people to connect to important things of their own choosing, deciding I want to commit to this man or woman because I love them, committing to this community because I believe in its possibilities, committing to this faith because I believe it in the inner depths of my soul, believing in my country and realizing it's not perfect and I need to make it better. And so you ask, what are the long-term consequences? The long-term consequence is a generation that sees freedom as tantamount to indulgence, that sees liberty as the same thing as licentiousness, that, that, that doesn't connect to important and big things. I mean, I think of my own life, and I'll be honest, being a husband is hard. Being a father is hard. Being a teacher is hard. Being a person of faith is hard, but connecting to those things are what give my life purpose and meaning. It's what the Greeks called human flourishing. And I'm afraid that we're creating a whole generation that will use its freedom to not connect to any of those things. So let me ask you this. One of the things that you say in the book is that there's high expectations aren't being instilled anywhere. And that, you know, this uh, laxity can become contagious. So normally those high expectations are coming from the adults. So yes. why hasn't that happened? I think that my generation, and I want to be very clear that, you know, my, my criticism of young people is re not really a criticism of them, it's a criticism of, of you and me. It's, it's our generation. And I think what we have done is in our zest to be compassionate and empathetic and kind, which are all good values, I think we have forgotten that we are, we are supposed to do those things so that the students feel secure in their lives so that they can go out and achieve colossal things uh, you know, in, in their adult, uh, you know, in their adulthood and in their and in their lives. And so, for instance, in schools, uh, you know, now teachers are not just teachers. We are friends. We are counselors. We're acting in place of parents at times. And I think that sometimes what we have forgotten is, you know, we give kids three meals a day. We give them counseling services. We give them, you know, clothes and the basics if they need it so that then they feel secure enough that we can pivot and say, you still have to go into a classroom and work hard. You still have to study. You still have to take notes. You still have to show up every day. Because we think that we're being compassionate by you know, letting students, you know, giving them a, a diploma without achieving anything. And you know, it's this mentality that we have in our society today, which says, well, if we decriminalize everything, crime will go away. If we give a trophy to everybody, that means that everybody achieved excellence. And now we're seeing in our schools that you know if we just make it so that you don't have to take hard classes you don't have to you know have to take an exit exam you don't have to meet any of these high expectations that somehow it still means that you're educated if you walk across the stage and we're doing nobody a favor by doing that i mean i think anybody listening to this knows 
that any form of success in life requires so much diligence, so much knowledge, so many skills. And yet in our schools, we feel that we're compassionate by simply giving you a diploma when you don't have those skills and you don't have that deep knowledge. And we're really, really robbing young people of what they're going to need to stand tall in the world and achieve the most they can with their lives.